Brooklyn Independent Television. Philip Townsend, Kate Simon, and Richard Avedon. Those names may not sound familiar to you, but they're some of the people behind rock and roll's most celebrated photographs. The Brooklyn Museum is hosting the first ever major exhibition devoted exclusively to rock and roll photographers. And next, I take a look at the relationship between images and rock, along with the music revolution that's brewing right here in Brooklyn. Matthew? Hi. Yes, hi. I was heard you were wearing an Argyle sweater. Oh. Okay. We're just taking a quick look around, but just so far, it's awesome. You know, because we were dealing with photographers. That's the Brooklyn Museum's chief designer and one of the people behind Who Shot Rock and Roll, a photographic history from 1955 to the present. It features the likes of Bruce Springsteen, Tina Turner, and Mick Jagger. In all, 175 works by 105 photographers. And as a rock fan and music radio jock myself, I love taking it all in and finding out the stories behind the pictures. A lot of people went into the manila folders in their desk and opened up photographs they hadn't seen in 30, 40 years. Wow. So for example, like these photographs yeah. right here um, of Jimi Hendrix from the Monterey Pop Festival, um, Ed took these photographs when he was 17 years old and didn't quite realize how important they were going to be until many years later. It's right. not just about the music artist, it's about mm -hmm. the photographer. It's about the photographers, right. And what was great about going back into those old files was that you were seeing that these photographers, a lot of them are really good printers. You know, they were actually in the dark room making these prints themselves. And so when you see a photograph like by Penny Smith of The Clash's London Calling, this is the actual photograph that was used for the cover. It's been voted the number one rock and roll photograph ever taken. But now you actually get to see the real print. You know, this captures a place and time. Yeah. And like the like ones... this is the end of a concert. Yeah, he's you know? exhausted. He's like, totally <laughs> exhausted, that's right. So you see a lot of photographs of very personal moments um, that are really about that relationship between the photographer and the musician. I invited some of my music expert pals to the museum to get their perspective. We decided to start with a shot taken of Paul McCartney by his late wife, photographer Linda McCartney. This is a perfect example of great rock photography, and it was taken by Linda of Paul uh, in the 70s, and she had a great quote saying that rock photography succeeds when you know when to click, and all of the great rock photographers in the day in the 60s and 70s and into the 80s they knew when to click because they were capturing these these paintings that were happening. Art is all about images whether they're audio images like so many of these rock and rollers have given us or they're physical images that the photographers have given us it takes you to a place in time it gives you a feeling and these photographers certainly have accomplished that. I mean this is two months after Sgt. Pepper and it's the height of psychedelia. Avedon captured them it's just their faces it doesn't have to have any statement other than you know their eyes their eyes tell the whole story and this is great rock photography this is great human photography And that was part of the reason there were so many people checking out the exhibit the day I stopped by. What did you first hear about the exhibit? Subway trains. There were so many advertisements on there, so knew I had to get here before January when it closed. I was really interested in photography and uh, same moments with uh, a lot of famous people. I used to take photography, music, yeah, not so much rock and roll, but a lot of R&B and rap and Soul. It's not just shots of concerts, but you know, behind the scenes and you know, before they were even famous, you know, struggling artists. Uh, and, uh, I can relate to that. Many of these photographs were captured in New York, including in Brooklyn, which made me think of where music lives today. Definitely seems like it's, there's a shift and it's bringing it back to Brooklyn or bringing it to Brooklyn. And bringing it back to Brooklyn. When rock and roll was first starting out, the Brooklyn Paramount was the scene for so many shows. They were huge. And nowadays, all of a sudden, there's this new life into the local music scene here in Brooklyn where so many bands, so many fantastically talented people have popped up here and are doing their own original music that a lot of the major artists are taking notice and returning here to Brooklyn. There's such a scene going on. And that scene will likely be captured in photographs, continuing to give a visual identity to music. 
even if the way we take and view photography has changed. The opening text that um, talked about how the images kind of live on when the music stops, it really kind of reads true throughout the exhibition. For Brooklyn Review, I'm Lauren Moraski. Who Shot Rock and Roll is on view at the Brooklyn Museum through January 31st, 2010. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.